Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to everyone at the Jewish Federation of Nashville and Middle Tennessee for putting this ceremony together. Today, we are coming to honor those who were murdered during the Shoah and to pay our respects to both the survivors and their families. Even if we are physically apart, in these challenging times, we have to do our best to be spiritually to together and closer. Today, we remember the past as we commit ourselves to keep working on a daily basis to ensure a better future for us, for our children, and for our grandchildren as well. Less than two weeks ago, we read in the Passover Agadah, that behold or vador, that in every generation, there are those who try to destroy us. In ancient times, it was Pharaoh, and then it was the Babylonians and the Romans as well. We later had to deal with the Inquisition and with the Cossacks. In the 20th century, it was the Nazis. And today, beyond the many anti-Semites that unfortunately are still living around us, we are faith facing the threat of a nasty virus. And yet, there is a big, big difference between today's virus and those who tried to eliminate us in the past. As you know, the virus doesn't discriminate and doesn't have a consciousness of its own. On the contrary, from Heyman to Hitler, all of them, all of those who try to kill us, all of them knew what they were doing and they intentionally wanted to eradicate us from the face of the earth. But they couldn't do it, they couldn't defeat us, and neither the virus will be able to do so. We have to hang in there, we have to be strong, and we have to face today's uncertainties with resilience, with courage, and also with hope. May the memories of those who died during the Shoah be a blessing for all of us. May they inspire us to be the best version of ourselves. And as we continue to share their stories, may we find the ways to make this world a better place for all. As we begin with this ceremony, I want to invite Eli Flyer to lead us in singing Eli Eli, this beautiful and touching poem written by Hannah Senesh. <laughs> Yeah. 
we learn in the Hebrew Bible that ner Hashem nishmata adam, that the candle that is guiding God's path is each and every one of our souls. It is in that spirit that at this moment, we will invite everyone here who is following this transmission to light a candle if you have to the Zecher, to the memory of those who were murdered during the Shoah. And as we light that candle, we will hear another poem being read. Asher Gafur, Shanisra, Lehitsi, Lehava. Asher Halahava, Shebaara, Besitre, Lehava. Ashrei halavavot sheyadu lechai lechadol bahavot. Ashrei agafur shenisraf vehitzit lahavot. Blessed is the match consumed in kindling flame. Blessed is the flame that burns in the secret fastness of the heart. Blessed is the heart with the strength to stop its beating for honor's sake. Blessed is the match consumed in kindling flame. Good afternoon. My name is Leslie Kirby, and I'm the, currently the chair of the Community Relations Committee of the Jewish Federation and Jewish Foundation of Nashville and Middle Tennessee. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for this afternoon, Judy Sherrick. Judy is currently the coordinator of the Education and Advocacy Division for National Hadassah and is the Hadassah liaison to the Jewish Agency and to the World Zionist Organization. Judy is on the board of trustees for the Jewish National Fund and the American Zionist Movement. She has previously served as vice president and national secretary of Hadassah as well as the coordinator of the Young Judea Division. She has also served as a teacher at Frisch Yeshiva. Judy has two children and four grandchildren. In her current position as the coordinator of the Education and Advocacy Division in National Hadassah, she's worked directly with legislative sponsors and other elected officials on the Never Again Act. She joins us now live from New York to discuss these efforts and the continued importance of federal legislation on such as Never Again. Thank you so much for that introduction. Today, we gather to commemorate Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. On April 8th, 1959, it was the Knesset that established this day by passing a law for an annual commemoration of the Holocaust. However, today in the year 2020, we are witnessing a rise in anti-Semitism and hate crimes against many different groups. Many synagogues have been vandalized recently. You all heard of the one in Huntsville, Alabama. That was just one of many attacks. There have been horrific attacks on synagogues and on Jews worshiping. There has been an increase in crimes against the black community, the Hispanic community, the Asian community, and many other minorities. In addition, currently, Jews are being blamed for the outset of the coronavirus. At recent rallies to bring back our country, there have been placards, people carrying signs, placards with anti-Semitic slogans on them. The Anti-Defamation League has conducted a global survey and this is so frightening because half of those surveys did not know anything about the Holocaust, had never heard of it. Those without any knowledge of the Holocaust was extremely high amongst young people. Therefore, it is understood that education is an important first step. It is too late to begin education as adults, we must start as children. 
and we must support our educators in their efforts to instill the universal lesson of the Holocaust to every generation. The lessons of how hate and intolerance can lead to an unimaginable outcome. On Yom HaShoah, we must ensure that we never forget and we remember the millions of lives lost during the Holocaust and educate the future generations on the dangers of hate. Representative Carolyn Maloney of New York wrote and decided to introduce a bill entitled the Never Again Education Act. This national legislation would provide funding to give teachers across the United States the tools and the training that they need to teach middle and high school students the lessons of the Holocaust and the consequences of intolerance and hate. On April 11, 2018, we in Hadassah joined with Representative Maloney to announce the introduction of the bill and the key role that Hadassah would play. Since that beginning, Hadassah has worked hand in hand with the sponsors of the bill. We helped get support from 300 organizations and I'm very proud to tell all of you on this video call today that the Jewish Federations of North America has been a wonderful partner with us in support of this bill. We spoke at press conferences. We hosted a Senate briefing on Capitol Hill to educate and advocate in favor of the bill. Our members have visited, have written letters to their Congress people in support of the bill, we do have members in every congressional district in this country, and they were motivated and activated. On January 27th of this year, the House of Representatives passed the bill with a vote of 393 to five. I don't know who those five were. It was once again explained that this bill will establish a new federal program and a fund to award Holocaust education grants to educational institutions offering classes, resources, teacher training, and student field trips. We in Hadassah stated at that time that it is imperative to make every effort to push back against hatred, bigotry, anti-Semitism, and extremism that has been fueling violent attacks. However, there's still one more step before it is officially a law. It must now pass the Senate. Once again, our members have been calling, visiting, and writing letters to their senators. We already have 63 senators that have agreed to be co-sponsors. They are joining the lead co-sponsor, who is Jackie Rosen of Nevada. However, due to the current situation that we are living in, and the reason why we are here on video, the Senate is not in session. We do not know the exact date that they will return, nor do we know when this bill will actually be brought to the floor, but hopefully very soon. Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee was one of the very first to support the Never Again Education Act. The Senate version of this bill is currently in the Committee of Health, Education, Labor, and Pension. The chair of that committee is your other senator, Lamar Alexander. However, he will not co-sponsor a bill that is in his committee. The U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, wrote, and I will quote, May the memory of the six million compel us to speak up wherever there is silence and educate wherever there is ignorance. UN Ambassador from Israel to the United Nations, Danny Danone, said, and I quote, 
we will endeavor to ensure that the lessons of history are learned. We will continue to educate and to fight and be victorious. Natan Sharansky, former prisoner of Zion, wrote, a lesson for all of us Jews and non-Jews from every corner of the world must teach and work for a life of compassion, freedom, and tolerance. And so today, on Yom HaShoah, the words never again resonate with us as we seek a better educated, more compassionate, and more tolerant world. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. We appreciate your hard work and dedication on this issue of vital importance, and we will certainly do what we can locally to continue pressuring our elected officials um, on the Never Again Act and other similar legislation at both the state and federal level. Thank you again for joining us today. Before we move on, in addition to thanking Judy for her inspiring words, we'd also, also like to thank our participants in the ceremony this afternoon, Rabbi Kulik, Cantor Sarah Levine, Ellie Flyer and Yara Kulik, as well as Ilanit Sedek, who designed the event artwork, and of course, Deborah Olashansky, who managed to plan and coordinate such a lovely ceremony, even in the midst of our global pandemic and social distancing. I'd like to now introduce Cantor Sarah Levine, who will lead us in El Malai Rachamim. El Malai Rachamim, Ashochen Hamaromim, Hametze Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanpe Hashochina, Demalot Kiroshim Oterim, Kezawar Rakia Masirim. Nishmot Kolachinu Bene Israel, Shanit Behuba Shoa, Nashim Nashim Bata, Shanach Nehu, the Shanis Rafu, the Shanahergu Shemasru, at Nasham Akidu Shashem. Begani then the Himenu Hatam, Anabalarachamim, Astirem, the Sitter Kirathahale on him, Utseror, the Sror Hayim, and Ishmoteam, Adonai, who Nahalatam, the Anuhu, the Shalom, Amishkevoteam. Then Omar, Amen. Exalted, compassionate God, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure, whose radiance is like the heavens to the souls of all the men, women, and children of the house of Israel who were slaughtered and strangled and burned in the Shoah. May they rest in paradise. Master of mercy, may they find eternal shelter beneath your sheltering wings and may their souls be bound up in the bond of life. Adonai is their portion. May they rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. And now we will say, the morning is Kaddish on this special concentration cup and ghetto version for Yom HaShoah. It gadal Auschwitz, ve'it kadash lodz shemer rabba ponar. Balma divra hirute babi yar, ve yamblich malchute, my danek, ve chayechon ve yomechon, birkeno, ve chaye de holbeit Israel, kovno, bagala u bizman kariv, transnistria, ve imbru amen. Yeesh me rabba me borach lola mulme al maya, it barach ve ishtabach, Teres in Stadt, Veit Paar Veit Romam, Buchenwald, Veit Nasse Veit Adar, Treblinka, Veit Ale Veit Alal, Vilna, Sheme de Kutscha, Bergen Belsen, Brich U, Leela, Mauthausen, Minkol Birchata Veshirata, Dachau, 
תוש וחטא ונחם אתה, מינסק, דאמירם בעלמא, וורסו, ואמרו אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיה, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. And now before we conclude with this ceremony, let me add a few concluding remarks. The day that was chosen to mark Yom HaShoah ve'akvura in our Jewish calendar is connected actually to April 19th of 1943, which is the day of the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto. To me, It is always an opportunity to go back and to read some of the thoughts written by some of the survivors. So as we are bringing this ceremony to its conclusion, let me share with you one brief sentence written by Primo Levi, an Italian Jew who survived Auschwitz. In one of his books, Primo Levi wrote the following. Many people, many nations, can find themselves holding more or less wittingly that every stranger is an enemy. When the unspoken dogma becomes the major premise in a syllogism, then at the end of the chain, there is a concentration camp. With that quote in mind, let me close by saying the following. Every time that we as a society play a scavenger hand signaling outcasts, we risk losing our essence as human beings. Every time a privileged group goes on a witch hunt, it ends up building thick walls that separate us. So despite the urge to point fingers at those who look strangers to us, We should work on our ability to create a pluralistic and inclusive society open to every immigrant willing to bring a generous and wise heart to the mix. A society that is welcoming to all those who are invested in developing a diverse and multicultural space in our midst. In this context, we need to be aware of our own responsibility for making this happen. Because as Primo Levi also wrote, monsters exist, but they are too few in number to be truly dangerous. More dangerous are the common men, the functionaries ready to believe and to act without question. The Shoah happened because a group of mad men came to power, but part of their strength lay in the sympathies they gathered with those who elected Hitler in 1933 and the apathy shown by everyone else. The monsters were few, but those ready to help them or to pretend that nothing worth noticing was happening were plenty. And of that phenomenon, we need to be deeply mindful even today. Because at the end of the day, we have the power to shape the society that we want to live in if we just dare to make use of the resilience, the heroism, and the courage with which we were all created. Just like those men and women in April of 1943 that decided to courageously face the messengers of radical evil and plain hate. Thank you for being here with us today. We will now conclude this ceremony, inviting Eli Flyer to lead us with the Atitva. Please rise if you can.
Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. In case you tuned in late, we're now going to replay the slideshow of our local um, survivor families. Um, so stay tuned if you would like to watch that again. Shalom. Thank you.